welcome to my channel. My name is Samantha and if you are new here, just know that I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer in 2019 at age 22. Even though I finished active cancer treatment at the end of 2019, I finished chemo and I had surgery and then radiation, I um, am still taking hormone therapy medications and a targeted therapy medication. Those hormone therapy medications put me into a medical menopause state, which just means that you know, I'm basically in menopause. I don't have periods. I have hot flashes and other menopause side effects. I have another video on my channel talking about my experience with hormone therapy where I talk more about the types of hormone therapy medications I take and all of the other side effects that I experience. And so if you're interested in that, go check that out on my channel. This video is gonna be all about hot flashes, what they are, what happens to me, how I deal with them, so hopefully this helps somebody that is dealing with hot flashes or is just about to start hormone therapy. So first, what are hot flashes? Now, I know that I'm not gonna do a good job of explaining this, so I'm going to Google it. So this page from the Mayo Clinic is the first thing that comes up. And it says, a hot flash is the sudden feeling of warmth in the upper body, which is usually most intense over the face, neck, and chest. Your skin might redden as if you're blushing. A hot flash can also cause sweating. If you lose too much body heat, you might feel chilled afterwards. Also, night sweats are hot flashes that happen at night and they may disrupt your sleep. I feel like that's a pretty good description. One thing that I'll add is that they usually, for me at least, last between like one and four minutes, just depending on how hot I already am and how intense the hot flash is. And they say it's a sudden feeling of warmth. It's like, a really intense feeling of warmth. Now, I, I know they can be more mild, so some people might not like experience that much of a change. One person said one time, they were like, I love having hot flashes because I'm always cold, so I get to feel warm. And I'm like, okay, well, if you like them, first of all, I'm also always cold. If you like them, that means that your hot flashes aren't that severe. That's really great for you. They make me feel like ridiculously hot. I start sweating. I'm having one right now because I'm getting so worked up about hot flashes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sweating up here. You probably can't see it. And then I sweat at the back of my neck too. Okay, so why do hot flashes happen? Hot flashes happen a lot of times to people who are in menopause. Some people don't experience them at all when they're going through menopause. Um, and some people do and then they have them for like the rest of their lives and some people have them for like a few years and then it calms down and they don't have them anymore. Causes. Hot flashes are most commonly caused by changing hormone levels before, during, and after menopause. It is not clear exactly how hormonal changes cause hot flashes, but most research suggests that hot flashes occur when decreased estrogen levels cause your body's thermostat, not gonna try to pronounce that word, to become more sensitive to slight changes in body temperature. When the hypothalamus thinks your body is too warm, it starts a chain of events, a hot flash to cool down. What happens to me when I have a hot flash? I usually feel it starting like in my chest. Now this is something that I have gotten more familiar with as I've had more and more hot flashes. At the beginning, I didn't really know when they were gonna happen. I just noticed that I was like super hot and now I can kind of tell when they're about to happen and I honestly can't really give very many tips about how to tell when they're about to happen. You just kind of have to have them a lot and pay attention. I get super hot. Usually my face will turn really red. Um, my whole body gets hot, pretty much. Um, my arm, my legs, like everything just gets really hot. Usually my face starts sweating. Lasts sometime between one and four minutes. A lot of times when it's over, I'll get really cold after, just probably because like I sweat. My body goes through all this stuff to try to cool itself down. So then when it's over, it's just freezing. I can't tell you how hot I get. Like it makes me want to like take all my clothes off and jump in the snow. I have said this before and I will say it again. If men had hot flashes, things would just be broken all the time. You know how when men get angry, they like break things? When you have a hot flash, it's just so, so annoying because you can't do anything about it. You just get so hot and it's so uncomfortable. I think men would just throw things and break things. And I just think that if men had hot flashes, <laughs> that everything would break all the time. 
In the winter, I don't sweat as much, probably because it's colder outside. In the summer, I sweat a lot, especially if I'm outside. And if I am wearing a mask, it is actually the most uncomfortable experience. When the pandemic started and I was dealing with this, I was like in Target one day and I was wearing a mask and it was like my first time dealing with a hot flash while wearing a mask. It was so bad that I literally sat down on the floor because the ground was cold and then I could feel like the cold ground against my legs. So it was so uncomfortable. Another thing that happens to me that has started happening more often is that if I am hot before the hot flash happens, like if I'm outside in the summer heat and then I got a hot flash, I will a lot of times get these like little white hives on my chest. I don't know why the camera keeps going in and out. They just stay there for a while and then they eventually go away. Okay, so when do hot flashes happen? For me, they typically happen around every hour, plus or minus 20 minutes or so. And the reason I know this is that I have tracked them before and sometimes they will happen like almost exactly every hour where it's like, Oh, it's 2.45, guess I'm gonna have a hot flash. And then I'll have one at 3.45 and 4.45 and whatever. And like, it gets to be pretty obvious. Sometimes they happen earlier if something like kicks it off. And sometimes they happen later if like I'm really relaxed and not doing anything. If I go from being really cold to really warm. So a lot of times this will happen like if you're getting into a hot car after you've been outside and like your car's been sitting in the sun or if you're walking from inside in the air conditioning to outside in the summer heat or if you're going the other way, like it's winter and then you're going into a heated room. So the thing about it is, is if I have just had a hot flash, it won't get kicked off. But if it has been like 30 minutes since I've had a hot flash, then those things can start off a hot flash. Another thing that can cause them to happen is if I get stressed or if I get nervous. So if I'm like really worried about something and it's just about to happen, this will happen all the time whenever I have to like talk to somebody. This happens all the time when I'm in the hospital because I'm like wearing a mask. So like the mask makes it worse. The doctor's about to come in the room and I'm gonna have to like talk to him. Like I will have a hot flash or like the nurse or like I need to talk to the check-in lady. And like, that's just because I, get stressed when I need to talk to people. But anyway, another thing that causes it for me is when I'm in traffic. <laughs> I get really stressed out when I'm in traffic and nervous about like crashing, whatever. My drive home from work is about an hour. I noticed that a lot of the days I would go most of the car ride and I wouldn't have a hot flash. The very end of my car ride, I would have a hot flash because when I get closer to where I live, I get closer to a bigger city. So the traffic starts to get worse. It took me a while to realize that, but when I did, I was like, oh. <laughs> Another time that it happens is if I get really mad or really annoyed. If Gray and I are like in a fight or something, I have literally told him before, oh, you made me have a hot flash. Another time that it happens is Anytime Gray walks in the room. If you're new to my channel, Gray is my husband. I'm not exactly quite sure why this happens. I'm not sure if just looking at him like gives me like butterflies in my chest that kind of like makes me really warm. I honestly think that's what it is. The other thing that it could be is that like I'm anticipating the body heat from him because he's so much warmer than me all the time. Um, but like he can literally be across the room and I'll see him and then I'll just like get a hot flash and he and he thinks that I make them up because he'll walk over to me and I'll be like no don't touch me I'm having a hot flash. It's the weirdest thing. Another time that I get them is when I start eating It's like the most annoying thing because if you're at a restaurant and you're sitting like right next to people like on either side of you um, and you start to have a hot flash, you're just like, well, I can't go walk around the restaurant. What do I do? I guess just because you're eating food and it's warm and it's like going like, you know, into your body. And so that causes hot flashes a lot. And then probably the most annoying time that I get hot flashes is right after falling asleep. Every night I get into bed, I turn off the light, I get under the blankets and I start to go to sleep. Everything's fine. I fall asleep. You know how like you're in that state where like you're not quite asleep yet, but you're like just about to be asleep? Every time I have a hot flash, every time. Then I have to get up. I have to get myself cooled down right when I was about to fall asleep. And <laughs> stop the hot flash, get cooled and like, 
get the wipe the sweat off and whatever and then I have to restart the entire process of going to sleep. What do I do to help hot flashes while they're happening? I think this is probably the number one thing that helps me and that is just take off a layer of clothing. I wear these fuzzy socks all the time because my feet are always cold but another reason is just when I'm having a hot flash the easiest thing for me to do is just to take these fuzzy socks off. If I'm sitting around the house I almost always have a blanket and fuzzy socks, sometimes a sweatshirt, but I don't really wear sweatshirts as much anymore just because they are harder to take off and it's easier to take off, to throw off a blanket or to take off socks than it is to take off a sweatshirt and seconds count when you're having a hot flash because it just starts to get hotter and hotter and hotter. When I'm at work, I like to always wear a sweater because if I'm wearing a sweater, I can take it off and the hot flash is more manageable. If it's winter, I go outside or I lean against a window because it, it's really cold. It's a great fix because if it's freezing outside, just walk out there without a coat. It's great. This is another thing that I do pretty much every time, drink water. A lot of times when I have a hot flash, you can just feel it in your chest. When you drink the water, you can feel the water like move through your body to cool yourself down. Another thing that I do a lot is just to get up and walk around. Anyone who doesn't have a hot flash will think that this is crazy because you're like, how does that help? It actually does help. Any movement of air helps. If you feel the hot flash coming on, do anything in your power to just make yourself colder before it happens or like right when it starts happening. Don't wait. If you wait, it's worse. <laughs> if I'm by myself, in my car, I will blast the car air conditioning. And sometimes when I'm with other people, if it's a really bad hot flash, I don't even care. If it's winter, I will blast the car air conditioning because it is so hot. <laughs> Another thing that I will do is go to the bathroom. This is a really weird one. Comment down below if you guys experience this. I should have put this on the when do they happen. A lot of times if I have to pee really badly, a hot flash will just happen. And then when I pee, it helps the hot flash. And then the reverse also happens. Like I will get a hot flash and then I will have to pee really bad. And then using the bathroom helps the hot flash. So I'm not exactly sure which one is the cause and which one is the effect. And then another thing that I do to help them is just try to stay relaxed. If you get like really worked up about the hot flash happening, it makes them worse and this is a really hard thing to do because they suck so much but if you get angry about the hot flash happening it's worse i just want to throw this out there you can do your own research you can ask your doctor there are tons of things out there that people say help hot flashes that help some people that don't help other people. The first tip that I have for you is to keep track of your hot flashes and figure out when they happen. If you get an idea of when they're going to happen, that information could help you a lot. Pay attention to your body. When the hot flashes sneak up on you, they are so much worse. You kind of just have to keep having hot flashes and going through it until you can like start to really feel when they're coming. If I'm concentrated on something and I'm working really hard on something, sometimes I won't pay attention and I won't feel the hot flash coming. And that's when the hot flashes are so annoying, especially because you're in the middle of doing something and you're focused on something and the hot flash makes you stop and worry about the hot flash instead of continue to work on the thing that you're working on. So just like paying attention to your body and trying to figure out what works for you when the hot flashes are gonna happen. If you, and if you can see them coming, it will help you deal with it when they happen. Okay, this is one thing that I've noticed for me and many other people have also said this. Sugar makes them worse and salt makes them worse. If you're eating a lot of sugary foods and a lot of salty foods, also spicy foods, hot flashes are usually worse after that. I tend to avoid spicy foods already just because I can't handle spice, but this is just another reason why I avoid it because they make hot flashes that much worse. Um, but you should just pay attention to what you eat and see if you notice patterns with the kinds of foods you eat. I saw someone the other day say they went vegetarian and their hot flashes just stopped. So, and I know that that's not the case with everybody, but everyone's bodies are different. Everybody has different foods that they can and can't eat and foods that cause hot flashes or don't. So pay attention to what you eat. This is one that you definitely have to ask your doctor about. Gabapentin, 
Gabapentin helps me with hot flashes. I started taking it because I had neuropathy in my fingers from Taxol chemotherapy, and my doctor kept me on it because it was actually helping my hot flashes as well. I take gabapentin every day and when I don't take it, my hot flashes happen more often. I know some people that take it and their hot flashes pretty much disappear. So you should try it. Um, ask your doctor about it first, obviously. There's other medications out there that people say just completely eliminate their hot flashes. And then I think like there's some vitamins and stuff that people take as well that help their hot flashes. But like I said, do your own research, ask your doctor about it. Like I said before, wear layers. Even if you're not cold, just wear the layer so that you have something to take off when the hot flash starts. And then when the hot flash is over, put the layer back on so that you're ready for the next one. Keep water nearby at all times. Just go ahead and carry a water bottle around with you all the time. Some people I've seen like have these like little necklace fan things, like you know the like little portable fans that they sell at theme parks and stuff. They just carry those around with them. And then there's other devices that are sold on the internet that are supposed to help hot flashes and some people swear by them. These next two are um, advice for night time. I tend to be a light sleeper, so whenever I have a hot flash, I just immediately wake up before I start sweating, but then I will start sweating. Keep water by your bed. Also, um, a cooling blanket or a pillow or a fan. A lot of people sleep with a fan right by their bed, so if they wake up and they have a hot flash, just turn the fan on. When the hot flash is over, turn the fan off. I don't have a ceiling fan or anything, but I have noticed like whenever I'm in like a new place and I'm sleeping in a bed and there's a ceiling fan, oh my gosh, it is the most amazing thing in the entire world. Like when I wake up, I can just take the blankets off and then the ceiling fan does its work on me because there's just air circulating and it helps so much. King beds are another thing. Gray and I have a queen bed. Whenever we go to a hotel and there's a king bed, there's so much extra space. We sleep pretty close next to each other, but when I have a hot flash, obviously I don't wanna be that close to him. When there's a king bed, I can roll all the way over to the other side of the bed and it's so cool because I haven't been sleeping over there and it's, it's amazing. When I have a queen bed, I do the same thing, but there's just not as much space, so it's annoying. So depending on how bad the hot flash is, Usually I'll just throw all the covers off. Sometimes I have to get up and I have to walk around and go to the bathroom. <laughs> a lot of times what I'll do is I will literally like turn around on the bed and just be like, Ugh. <laughs> But the main thing that I do when I sleep is I keep a pillow that's like on the floor right by my side of the bed. When I wake up, that pillow is really cool because I haven't been sleeping on it. So I'll take that pillow and like hug it and get like all the coldness out of it. Take a shower before you go to sleep. Because if I take a shower at night before I go to bed, I have fewer hot flashes during the night and they are less intense. And I think it's just because I like got rid of all that sweat that was on my body and it like unclogs pores or whatever. I don't know how it works, but it is, it helps so much. And I know a lot of people like to shower in the morning because like they like to, like get ready for work in the morning and like do their hair or if they have hot flashes, they're like, why would I shower at night? Because I'm going to sweat all night and so I'll have to take a shower in the morning because I'm gonna smell bad from sweating. Why not just take a shower in the morning as well? You can take a shower at night and just rinse off really quick, get into bed and then take a, your full shower in the morning if you like to take morning showers. For real, if you struggle with night sweats, try just try this tip. Having hot flashes for this long just made me realize certain things about myself, like the shower thing at night. Like I clearly noticed that the days that I took a shower, I had fewer hot flashes. And I know that there are people out there that have been dealing with hot flashes for a lot longer than I have. So if you have tips, leave them down below. Please give this video a thumbs up because it helps in the YouTube algorithm. It helps it get recommended to more people that it could help that are dealing with hot flashes or cancer or anything. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to follow along with my adventures with cancer and if you don't like cancer but you like me, subscribe to our couples channel. I have a couples channel with Gray. We do fun videos and vlogs and stuff. <sighs> yeah, that's all. Bye!